from the number one best-selling author of Life Rescripted. You are now tuning in to the Year of Purpose podcast. I'm Zephan Moses Blacksburg. Beth Banning is a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and spiritual catalyst who lives in California with her husband, their cat, and their six-pound poodle. She has just published her new book titled Interviewed by God, A Journey to Freedom, and is also the author of numerous other books, including the Meditation for Life series and the Marriage Guide series. Beth and her life partner have created several consciousness-shifting seminars that serve as a catalyst for participants to emerge with a whole new way of relating to themselves and to their world that helps them experience greater success in the most meaningful areas of their lives. Thanks for being here, Beth. You are welcome. Thanks for inviting me. So I just want to give our listeners, you know, a little bit of background on you. I know you just launched a book, but I'd love to hear kind of in a nutshell, just where your story begins and maybe one big shift that happened for you that's led to where you are now. Got it. I love that. Um, my life in a nutshell. <laughs> we'll try to get that in a nutshell for you. But um, gosh, I, you know, I don't know where to start. I mean, I think mostly my life began, you know, began, kind of began just as so many people listening. I, I didn't know. I was just trying to be happy. You know, I mean, I think like most of us were just trying to be happy. And I didn't know that everything, and I mean everything, that I was seeking and didn't even know I was seeking at the time, but everything that I was seeking was right inside of me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I was looking outside myself like so many of us. And when, you know, when I got more present and clear about, about me, like, and you know, I, it's hard for me to say it like that because, you know, I, I always think of, you know, I'm from the East Coast and when I moved to California, you know, the, um, you know, all the woo woo kind of, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, new agey stuff. I was like, you know, always the, you know, the navel gazing kinds of things, you know, right. and it is so not that, but it was what I was looking for. You know, and but what I knew at the time, all I knew was I wanted to be happy. And the other thing that I didn't know until it was gone was that I was always like had this underlying stress or anxiety or or irritation, not like angry irritation, but this just underlying agitation. Mm -hmm. Like something wasn't quite right or with me or the world or the people around me. It just, it just wasn't quite right, you know? So that's really where everything started. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people really feel that same way. I think we're in a world right now where uh, it's almost like we've we've woken up a little bit and we're learning more about ourselves and what we're capable of and what we can actually do with our lives as opposed to you know, like I mentioned in my book a lot about how, you know, my generation was raised to think we go to college, we get a job, we do the same thing for 40 years, and then we retire, and that's our life. Mm -hmm. And I think that now as the world is shifting, and, and so many more people are discovering that it doesn't have to be that way. Uh, they're also probably feeling that sort of, I would call it uneasiness in a sense, is it's exactly. something's off balance. Exactly. You know, and it's funny because just as you were saying, we don't, it's like we're starting to realize it, but it's so, it's so underlying that it becomes like the norm, you know, it just kind of builds up in us and, and you know how that expression is white knuckling, you know, you just do it anyway. Yeah. And like, I really think that's like was my experience and I, and I really get it. it's like so many people's experience that we just kind of white knuckle through the discomfort and even like pain if it's there and we just kind of put on a happy face like but we're we're really in knots and not satisfied and not not fulfilled you know and and it's not even conscious for most of us yeah i i think it's definitely it's under there and not too many people have quite grasped why they feel uncomfortable yet and uh you mentioned you know woo woo and how this is something where it kind of like rides this fine line of uh you know i've totally had some people check out my podcast and they're like oh that's like you know i'd never get into that or whatever and i, I think that there's definitely this line right now that's starting to get blended a little bit would you agree i i do agree you know i, I it's 
I was talking to a friend of mine kind of about this agitation. You know, and if you talk to it, I think, I think where the line blends is that people get it when they feel it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like um, I was talking to a friend about this underlying agitation, and he is so not a woo-woo guy. I mean, most people know what I mean when I say that <laughs> at this point, I guess. But he's like real straight, real traditional, you know, and he totally got that sense of underlying discomfort. And I think that's, that is where, where people, like the line is going to blend, you know, so that when they go, okay, I am uncomfortable, I feel that, so what do I do about it? What do I do about it? So, you know, once people are at a point where this is uncomfortable, what do I do about it? then it doesn't matter what the line is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you're just looking for, for relief. Right, absolutely. And I think that there we definitely get to a point where things start to click. And I always I, I tell people about how when I first got contacts for instead of wearing glasses, the doctor even said, you know, you're going to put these in. It's going to look a little blurry for a while. But in like 15 <laughs> or 20 minutes when you're driving home, it's just going to like go zhoop, and it's just going to click into place. And all of a sudden you're going to be able to see. And uh, part of me was like, well, how about I wait for that to happen before I drive home? But <laughs> but I, I think, I mean, was there a moment for you where you just kind of sat there and were just like, huh, like things are starting to make sense now? Well, you know, it, 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 it's funny. They There were so many moments. And, you know, I write about all the moments in my book, but there were so many moments and it was kind of a cumulative thing until like this one moment where it just all clicked, but I don't think it could have clicked with all the, without all the moments before it. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I hear a lot of people talking about the moment, but that moment, it's like the instant success. Do you know? Sure. It's like, no, absolutely. It's not instant. It's not a moment. It's like these cumulative moments. And I think for me, and and I honestly, as I'm looking, my husband and I have, you know, done workshops, uh, relationship communication for many, many years. And so I've, you know, worked with a lot of people. And what I believe has happened with me that allowed that to like totally jump over the edge, do you know, to um, uh, willingness to look at things that weren't familiar or weren't comfortable for me before was that... Um, my mind, this crazy, insane mind of mine, I heard somewhere, I just love the saying, your mind is a, is a dangerous neighborhood. Don't go there alone. <laughs> you know, and it's like our minds are insane. And, and I really believe without allowing my mind to relax enough to be open to these other things. So how do you get your mind? That's where, where really the moment was, was when my mind was able to relax enough. And when I say relax enough, I mean give it really productive things to do because our minds are going to work. It's what they do. You know, and I, I don't believe that, you know, ego mind and that kind of mind is something to get rid of because, you know, we need it, you mm. know. We came in with it. We need it. We just need to retrain it because it's been trained badly. So, you know, it's on defense all the time. I believe that's really where this underlying discomfort comes from is that it's on defense all the time. It's exhausting. Do you yeah. know? No, I totally agree. I mean, it, it probably part of it is from our hunter gatherer instincts of, you know, we were always looking out to make sure we're not getting about the tiger. to get eaten by a right. tiger yeah exactly. and <laughs> the then tiger jumping out right but you know it's just been programmed in for such a long time that now we we don't quite know how to reframe that uh and to make it habit so that you know it doesn't continue to do that and uh, again culturally you know i mean from hunter gatherer you get that 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 primal defense i mean we still need that we need to you know be careful when we cross the street you know those kinds of things but you know, culturally, we have been trained out of our feeling senses, our other intuitive senses that really were meant to, I believe, you know, now that I've opened up to a lot of um, things that weren't available to me before, that these other parts of ourselves 
are the parts that were me meant to make decisions, the parts that were, and I think honestly, so much of this decision making process being made by this crazy mind of ours stresses us out like crazy, you yeah. know, crazy. It, so it, it's, we're, we're in a world right now where it's far too easy to get stressed out and not oh. as easy to get relaxed. <laughs> That, that is for sure. So let's jump to this idea for this book. Well, the, so the book's out now, but I just want to jump forward a little bit in time to yeah. where the idea came to you. You know, it's called Interviewed by God, A Journey to Freedom. And I'm curious just to hear about uh, its conception and, you know, s some of the types of things that people can expect to read in there. Sure. Um, let's see. It's So... Some amount of years ago, now it keeps getting further and further away, I don't even know how long, I had what I call kind of a spiritual expansion. You know, a lot of people will call it a spiritual awakening, but I, you know, awakening seems like you're done, do you know? Now you're awake, you know? Right, you're good and to go now. It's like you're done. And for me, it really is, was, was and continues to be an expansion. So, you know, there was this great expansion and I keep having them. And I expect for them to never stop, honestly, and hallelujah, it's always more, more freedom, more, um, uh, more life every time I go into one of these expansions. So um, I, I had like this big one, which really opened me to um, a world that I hadn't expected. Um, and then I was guided, and like I was saying before, really what shifted most in my life is that I began to trust my own inner guidance mm. and live by that. And, and, you know, it sounds so easy. Oh, here's guidance. You go live by it, but it's very challenging. And really that is, um, really more than anything. I think that's the basis of the book is to be for me, to be an example of how the struggles, the challenges, the joys, the life, the freedom that comes from living in harmony with my innermost guidance, living and acting on it, and, and all the struggles that came when I did. Do you know? Again, it's not like this myth of, um, you know, one of the myths I've, I've become you know, being come to be known as, you know, kind of a spiritual myth buster because it's, <laughs> because it's like, there are so many crazy myths. Like all of a sudden you'll be awake and people are going for awakeness, you know, uh, quote unquote awakeness. And that all of a sudden their life will be perfect. And, you know, this, uh, like, ah, oh, you know, some angel comes down and dawns you with, you know, this white light and, and nothing ever happens that you don't enjoy anymore. And, and, you know, this isn't, spirituality this is that's crazy do you know <laughs> yeah absolutely you know? so so life really happens and ah this is this is the juiciest part of everything that i've gotten is life happens by living life all of it not just the things you think are the comfortable things or the happy things do you know it's your life if you know this is one of the things if if people were just I think I enjoy my life so much now because I'm willing to be uncomfortable. Mm. I'm willing to be uncomfortable. And we're running around looking to be comfortable all the time, all the time. That's, you know, what we're doing. And if we just relaxed in to just be willing to be uncomfortable, it really comes and goes like the weather, do you know? Yeah, so you... Discomfort. You're saying something interesting here is, and at first it might sound almost contradictory to people, but I want to dive into this a little further, yeah. is you're saying relax into being uncomfortable. So how do I relax <laughs> into being uncomfortable? I love that. Good. So I kind of alluded to it a little bit. And um, so it's a, a real quick way to play with that idea is that imagine every discomfort, because they're going to come along whether you like them or not, you know, whether we try to push them away or not, they're going to show up. So if you imagine discomfort like the weather, now there's all kinds of ways you can play with this, but this is simple. Imagine discomfort like the weather. You do not, 
yell at the weather and tell it to go away. Yes, you go, oh, it's a beautiful sunny day. And when it rains, you go, oh, maybe, you know, oh, crap. I, you know, have to go out and do my, you know, errands or something. But you're not sitting there yelling at the weather or trying to push it away or hide from it or whatever. You just grab an umbrella and you go about your business. Right. And really, that's really just like any discomfort. If you know, and I guarantee that they come and they go. They come and they go, but that we fight so hard against them that they honestly, they stay longer than when we don't. And feelings, and when I say feelings, I mean emotions, which is different from sensing, you know, your physical sensing, but feelings as emotions also come and go like the weather. One of the most interesting things that I've realized is that, you know, Things are way more, I mean, you know, scientists are finding it now that everything is energy. Mm -hmm. But all the feelings and emotions create uh, blocked energy or stagnant energy within us if we don't let it move. And that's just allowing discomfort. And, you know, the expression, push your buttons. Yeah. That's really just stagnant energy that you didn't let move. I, so I if, think that makes perfect sense. I mean, right? it's like acupuncture, right? Uh, <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Because that, all that does is let energy move. Yeah, no, I've, I mean, I've certainly, and, and this is one of those things that I have to bring up to the listeners is that, you know, you'll hear this and some people will be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I've done that before. And then some people, you know, might feel uncomfortable with it and say, ah, there's no way that works. But I mean, I can personally say from experience for many years at a time, I had had issues with um, inflammation, tendonitis, uh, a lot of injuries and things like that. And throughout college, I was going to do acupuncture like two or three days a week. And mm -hmm. it's absolutely amazing to see the results. And, and you're talking to a guy who has the biggest fear of needles in the world. And they're I'm not like... only sticking needles all throughout uh... my hands and my arms, but uh, they actually did a form of acupuncture where they hooked it up to a TENS unit and it uses small pulses of electricity to massage your muscles. Mm. And man, is it interesting to see how your body releases after you've done that. Mm. Oh, that's so great. And you know that I, I love that. Now, if you can attach that to doing, I, I think this would be the coolest thing and I've never done, I don't know anybody that does, but if you could attach acupuncture and connect it to emotional release at the same time, oh my God, that would be amazing. Yeah. Because, you know, I do my own, um, uh, again, I believe that everything that we need, all the questions, all the answers, all everything is all within us. And um, I'm guided on a regular basis to do emotional clearing, you know, because again, if somebody, if somebody can say or do something that triggers you, that means you have energy within you that needs to move, old beliefs, old things that you've pushed down. So if you can clear that kind of the same way acupuncture moves the, the um, chi, the energy within you, and then you can move your, move your emotional energy at the same time, it only creates more freedom, just like it does in your body when you do the acupuncture, it allows your body to be freer. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's... It's one of those things, and I, I hate to, like, dive into the woo-woo realm and have people listening and be like, no, but, I, I mean, it's no. it's one of those things where, much like how you were saying you have to relax into the uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you really just have to open yourself up to the possibility, and, and until you've tried it, yeah. you know, it's really hard to, to say what you think, but everyone's going to get out of it what they put into it, you know, yeah. if you go in with an open mind, uh, I think that you'll find uh, quite some interesting things start to happen for you. Yeah, and I, and I love people. I mean, my favorite people are skeptical people, honestly, <laughs> really, because I, I think that's smart, do you know? It's, it's to, to prove it to yourself, prove it to yourself, and that's how I go into everything. I am not somebody, again, like, you know, I guess maybe it's from being from New York, I don't know. <laughs> it's like skepticism is kind of born, you know, comes with me in the womb or something, I don't know. But um, I think it's a wonderful thing to see for yourself and know for yourself. But the other part of that is being open to see for yourself and know for yourself. So um, it's beautiful. Um, Benjamin Zander, he wrote a fabulous book called The Art of Possibility, I believe it's called. Mm -hmm. And he wrote in it something that touched me deeply because I am a skeptical person. I, you know, I, I 
you know, almost like a badge of honor, you know, sometimes because I love proving it to myself. But he said, which I loved, he said, a skeptical person is only a deeply passionate person that doesn't want to be disappointed again. Yeah, no, that actually, beautiful. that reminds me of what uh, Pat Flynn from the Smart Passive Income podcast at one point on one of his episodes, he said, you know, if you take a pack of dogs and you throw a rock into the middle of the pack, the dog that yelps loudest was the one that was hit. And it's much how uh, oftentimes the people that uh, have been hit the hardest by your message tend to be the ones to speak up. And a lot of the times it, it comes out as angry or, or mm-hmm. disgust. And uh, I think that they're the ones that actually need your help or needed to hear your message the most. Exactly. And there's and that, and that's a beautiful point too because any time anyone is upset, angry, frustrated, all there is is something that's deeply meaningful full for them is missing. Do you know? It's like one of the things my husband and I always say in our um uh work is that everybody is only ever saying please or thank you please or thank you. And thank you is very easy to hear, right? It's like, you know, oh, thank you for this, thank you for that. But please sounds like you, you know, and, you know, anger and upset and frustration and really all they're saying is please help me. Right. Please help me. So, you know, again, I love skeptical people. I love dealing with upset because I can just get present and really connect with the person and see what's going on with them. And the only way I can do that is if I don't have a bunch of buttons that can be pushed by their upset. I I mean, that makes sense. You need to have yourself in order before you can start to help others. And I, I think somewhere along this line, you know, there's part of your book is uh, you even said in your description is the book is meant to be a mirror for the reader to reflect their own experiences back to them. And I've found that emotions like anger and, and things we might consider negative emotions, I would call them more charged or energized emotions. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I found that oftentimes those come out and we are given an opportunity to learn so much about ourselves if you just put up a mirror. You know, imagine if you were like mid argument or about to say <laughs> something to someone and a mirror just kind of like shot down from the sky. It would be interesting to see what would happen for people. And you start they... talking to yourself. Yeah. You know, what's really funny about that is because if you look at how we talk to ourselves, we talk, we are so mean to ourselves. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm not sure even like, like, we've got to start looking in that mirror and start being kind to ourselves too. Do you know, start like if we can really, and, and that's part of, again, like you were saying, it's a mirror to reflect that my book is really a mirror to reflect the reader's experience. It's for them to start remembering, start being kind to themselves, start allowing their experience to be true for them to be okay to be acceptable to to start speaking it out into the world and start start being comfortable with their discomfort about themselves oh my god you know this world would change if we were just be as kind to ourselves as as we are to people other people who aren't in upset at us. Do you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? That's when we start getting scared and defensive. But when we see someone who needs help, we are so kind. We are so compassionate. And if we can, that's when I would love to see that mirror come down too. Do you know? (laughs) (laughs) And we can start being that kind of kind to ourselves. It would be awesome. I think we'll awesome. just have to we'll have to create a book here where as soon as they open it up, I know someone That's was it. I love someone that. was famous. They like made a book once and it w- it was titled something like everything you need to know about life. And like inside the book, it was just blank That's pages. And, it, oh, you know, yeah. at the end, it's just like make it yourself. That's right. And we just have a mirror. Everything right. You need to, That's right. Everything you need to know is right here. You know, I love that. I love that. It was so great. But I didn't answer your question. I want to do it really quick. Yeah, so yeah. just the title came from the book because it was it was kind of interesting so I was guided to write the book and it was so hard and I'm a writer I've written all kinds of books and I write articles and blog posts but the the book was arduous it was 
I almost gave up a million times. And finally, I got so angry, I started going, you know, I don't know, you wanted me to write this book, I thought it would be easy, do you know, because it's guidance, right? It's guidance, right? It should be easy. Yeah. And it was so hard. And I heard, I'll interview you. Way back, I had heard this idea that it, it's easier to write a book if just somebody um, interviews you and you can transcribe it, do you know? Mm -hmm. So I heard, I'll interview you, and I was like, what? You know, what are you talking about? And I heard, I'll ask, and you answer. And so what happened was, every time I got stuck with the book, well, thank God I got, the first question was, if you could put ev all the experiences you've had up till now into one word, what would it be? And that's how I started writing the book, Ooh. with that one question. And then every time I got stuck, I heard another question and I just kept answering them and that's how I wrote the book. And that's why it's called Interviewed by God because God was the name that I picked for my higher source of knowing. Very nice. And I, I actually have to say I really like that, um, you know, everyone's going to have their own source of, of where they derive their spirituality. And I think it sounds like you really nailed it on the head and gave everyone their own opportunity to uh you know consider where their spiritual path comes from and still be able to provide a ton of value to each person so it, it doesn't necessarily have to be for just this the super religious person or it doesn't have to oh be gosh, yeah. for the person who isn't religious at all um yeah. and i, I Actually, think this book is is definitely not for the super religious person i don't <laughs> <laughs> so not, i was like scared when i got the title I was like, seriously, you want me to, you know, have God in the title? And what I got from that is that that word has such, like, um, stuff. I don't even know the word I'm looking for now, but <laughs> it has such stuff in relation to it that people need to start looking at that for themselves, including me, you know? So, so that's why God was in there. And it, again, just like you're saying, it is so about you and not about the word or the you know whatever you call it is beautiful and perfect as long as you get connected to it <laughs> yeah I absolutely I couldn't agree more and Beth you know just to round things off here yeah. if you had any one sort of key to you know some people don't have this mirror it doesn't quite exist yet mm -hmm. um, if you had any one key or, or just a, a word of wisdom for starting to build this mirror and design it and putting it in place so that we can uh, relax into that uncomfortable zone and really start to see the truth about who we are um, as, as opposed to just, you know, putting ourselves out there and having others react to us. Uh, what would that be? You know, it's so funny because I, I could tell you so many different things, but what I'm going to tell you is that this path is not for the faint of heart. It's just not. Because what's shocking is that trusting your inner guidance is disruptive. It just is. So if you're still wanting to be comfortable, it, I think really what I'm saying is it takes like a commitment to jump in and say, screw it, I am so sick of feeling unsatisfied and unfulfilled that I'm just going to jump in because you will get, like everything will be upset when you jump into this path. It's just like everything you think is true will be tested. Mm -hmm. And it's so amazing. And you're going to let go of what you think matters. And it will be awesome. But first, it's going to be uncomfortable. It's just going to be uncomfortable. And the ir ironic, like what's really ironic is that, like I was saying, you have to be willing to experience everything without judging it good or bad. And this is really the true spiritual leap. And it, it's the next level of evolution. It just is. And the first thing it starts with is being willing. I'm willing to be uncomfortable. That's the first step. I'm willing, even saying it, I'm willing to be uncomfortable. So for those who are tuning in, and I'm sure some people are going to fall two different directions, but <laughs> for those who are saying, you know what, I really think that it's time for me to take this next step. 
Um, what is the best way for them to find your book and to learn more about you and uh, to, to find out more about all of the things that you have going on? Oh, thanks. You know, it's funny because there really are two camps. And and if you're, it's like the really kind of practical, pragmatic, and then there are the people, you know, who are jumping into kind of that woo-woo fun, woo-woo stuff. And so for the, for the people who are jump, like ready to really jump into the more out there stuff, you can go to bethbanning.com. And if you, I'm doing this thing right now because um, I'm so so passionate about people getting connected to their inner guidance that if you buy my book now and send me an email at beth at bethbanning.com and just let me know you bought the book, I will put you on a list. I'm creating a, a three-part video series about how to connect with your inner guidance and give you exercises and practical, you know, things that you can practice. And that's free. That comes with the seven, I don't remember, $17 or $18 book. And then for the people who are more skeptical, go to focusedattention.com. And this is our real cognitive, very practical, no woo-woo stuff where you can find out more about creating better relationships and communication. Very nice. So lots of great opportunities there. And I really do encourage the people who, you know, if you did stick with us this long, you're still feeling a little uncomfortable, but you know that it's time for a change to, to definitely check that out. And Beth, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be here. And I, I certainly enjoyed this conversation. You're so welcome. Hey, everyone, it's Zeph. Did you like this episode? Be sure to subscribe so that you can tune in next week and tell a friend about the show. If you want access to free training and exclusive interviews on success, happiness, lifestyle design, and adventure, visit me at yearofpurpose.com. Until next time, go out and let life surprise you so that you can live a life rescripted. scripted